Now, the discovery by scientists that tiny subatomic particles called neutrinos may travel faster than the speed of light will, if proved, mean that a huge chunk of our scientific thought will have to be rethought. According to some scientists, time travel could theoretically at least be possible. Time, in fact, could even go backwards. Thanks very much, Susan. Absolutely mind-boggling. So, Susan, remind us again, what's got these scientists so excited? Well, a team at CERN, which is home of the, the famous Large Hadron Collider, has been sending neutrinos to an underground laboratory 500 miles away in Rome. Now, these neutrinos are the most mysterious of the subatomic particles that make up the so-called standard model by which physicists make sense of the world. Of the world. So what they found is that the neutrinos uh, are arriving sooner than they should they seem to be travelling faster than the speed of light. Now, nothing is supposed to travel faster than the speed of light. It's a cosmic constant, if you like. The C in the equation E equals mc squared. Now, this, of course, is a challenge, then, to Einstein's theory of relativity, and more importantly, a challenge to something called causality. Now, put simply, that means cause comes before effect. Now, if C is not constant, the speed of light's not constant, then effect could come before cause, everything's up in the air, and our whole concept of time is fractured. Well, they, you've got to say Einstein's got a great track record. But that said, that said, you know, Newton had a great track record too. He had a theory of gravity, which worked fine for uh, ooh, over 200 years. And uh, then, you know, Einstein came along. He said, well, it might be modified under certain extreme situations, and that turns out to be the case, and that's the theory of general relativity. So, you know, say so maybe the same thing is going to happen to Einstein. Surely not all scientists believe that Einstein might have got this wrong. Well, that's right. There are plenty of sceptical voices out there urging caution over this result. The more I think about it, uh, the more I think it's unlikely that this will stand the test of time and, and prove Einstein wrong. I'd love to say that it would, but I suspect, I suspect um, some error is going to be, some obscure little error is going to be discovered uh, to, 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 to make the, the effect go away. Well, physicists are finding it all very hard to swallow. The idea of the speed of light being constant is sacrosanct. Uh, uh, but already this uh, very high-minded debate is being stripped down to basics. And scientists, not renowned for their great fashion sense, are letting their clothing do the talking. If this result at CERN is proved to be right and particles are found to travel faster than the speed of light, then I am prepared to eat my shorts live on TV. So if you have me back on Newsnight with a bit of ketchup, <laughs> that's what I'll do. Unless, of course, you've already done that. Very good. The time travel jokes are up all over the place today. Well, whichever way this turns out, it's pretty important, because either we've seen the biggest challenge to Einstein for 100 years, or a group of very clever people have missed something or stumbled across something very new. And one intriguing possibility is that these neutrinos travelled through another dimension to arrive sooner than they should. Thank you very much, Susan. Absolutely mind-boggling. <laughs> So remind us again, what's got those scientists so excited? Well, Gavin, it's all about neutrinos. Now, that might have been recorded a few moments ago, possibly the way things are going. It was recorded tomorrow morning anyway. For some, make some sense out of this, I hope. I'm joined by the physicist and author, Dr Michael Brooks. Michael, let's just assume that for a moment this research is, is right, on the right track. Okay. I mean, what could that mean in terms of the way we look at time and the question of which dimension we're in or may not be in? Well, I think one of the... And it's a big assumption to, to say that it is true. I think the next re recourse would be that these neutrinos are travelling through an extra dimension, which kind of sounds fantastical, but actually more advanced theories of physics that are currently being developed require us to have more than the three dimensions of space. And it's quite possible they took a kind of shortcut through a wormhole through space and uh, arrived sooner than the light would in that, in that way. But is, is this some kind of... Galileo moment when we're all going to start pulling out our hair because we realise we're not the centre of the universe, that things that we've held to be true for hundreds of years are suddenly not true, perhaps. I think one of the problems that we have is that the Galileo moment always took place in a, in, you know, without the media speculation and the media storm. Now, physicists are being forced to come out with these, um, you know, the, the rumours are, are leaking out. And so they're having to do this kind of analysis in public, which is somewhat embarrassing when it's quite 
likely and quite possible that they will find there's some kind of error, some kind of problem that, that uh, they've just not taken account of yet. Because measuring the speed of neutrinos is not something that, you know, the police can do with their speed cameras. I mean, it's no, they're, really, really they're complicated. So it could be difficult. wrong. It could so be it wrong. Could be wrong. The, there are sort of billions of neutrinos passing through your eye every second. You know, they hardly interact with anything. So getting them to register on a, on a detector is incredibly difficult. But, and then timing that, that register is very, very difficult. But is, the, is this largely a media get up or is I mean physicists are genuinely excited about this aren't they? Well of course they are because nothing in science really progresses without an anomaly without something you know that doesn't make sense to you and you want to go and, and that's how we got relativity in the first place because there was something wrong with the way uh, charged particles emitted radiation and so yes if it's right then it's exciting but uh, physicists are very cautious and uh, and most of them are saying there'll be something wrong with the experiment or the analysis. But there are others uh, there's people right like Michio Kaku and others who've been talking about all kinds of possibilities and questions of cause and effect, questions about basic philosophy, about how you actually decide to do a good action and whether you are responsible for your actions. I mean, all these questions could be raised by this, could they not? Well, I mean, all these questions are raised by issues of time travel. But what we have is neutrinos, if they are travelling faster than light, there's no uh, actual sort of uh, indication that they necessarily carry information, which is the crucial thing. So they don't carry information from the future into the past, for instance. So it's too early to be saying, you know, this is the route to time travel. Is it, very quickly, is this a bit inconvenient for a physicist? Because you're going to have to rethink quite a lot. I think uh, they'll do the rethinking once the analysis has been proved right. I, I think, you know, we can hold the presses on the new textbooks just now. OK, Michael, thanks very much. And just before we go, the Department for International Development has asked us to clarify its position following our programme on Wednesday. It says the Department for International Development has confirmed that, as Secretary of State Andy, Andrew Mitchell made clear, DFID officials in Ethiopia did make regular field visits to look into the allegations of aid distortion. DFID also says those field visits and dozens of similar visits by other donor agencies made clear that there was no systemic distortion for political reasons in the distribution of aid. That's all from Newsnight tonight. We'll be presenting the programme live from the Labour Party conference in Liverpool on Monday. Until then, have a great weekend, unless you've already had it. Good night. <laughs>